Hello everyone, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining from. Thanks for joining us on another edition of So What? This is episode 83. I know, 83 episodes of So What? It's so exciting. Um, all right, some of you are coming on, that's great news. I hope you have had a great week and a fabulous weekend celebrating the 4th of July. I thought it would be a great day to debut our Here Comes the Sun table topper, which I have hanging behind me here. So this is an applique project and it features a wonderful array of yellow and oranges and whites and golds, um, all these great thread colors that sort of blend to create a great sunrise or sunset or any sort of sun themed projects that you have. So we have curated this new thread bundle. It's called Sunshine and Daydreams. This is our 50 weight cotton thread. So it is really the preferred thread for piecing and quilting. It's a great weight to it. It's very high quality, long staple cotton thread. You might be familiar with our cotton and steel thread by Sulky. Cotton and Steel is a fabric company and we partnered with them um, long ago to come up with really fantastic, luscious thread colors that coordinate with their fabrics. Well, those spools have a lot, a lot of thread on them. So if you're using this thread for a larger quilting project, you will want to get the cotton and steel thread because it comes on the bigger king cones. Um, here we go. These have 660 yards on them. So this thread over here that I'm showing you, this curated bundle of 12 thread spools, this is the same high quality thread that you have come to know and love from the cotton and steel thread line, only it is in these smaller spools, the snap spools. So these have 160 yards on them. So these are really great for smaller projects like this, like this table topper, or if you want to use a lot of thread colors in your quilting, you can switch back and forth, which is what I did here, between all of these great thread colors to feature them all in your beautiful quilt projects. So again, this is a table topper. You could resize it to make it a larger sort of bed covering or make it a little bit smaller and have individual circular placemats. So really great idea that you can personalize for your needs for pretty much however you like. So I'm gonna be going over the tutorials for the table topper. I'll be giving you some tips and tricks for applique as well as for quilting and how to kind of streamline things, especially when you wanna incorporate 12 thread spools into a project. It can seem a little bit intimidating, but I will show you just how easy it is to do. I should also mention that I wound a bunch of bobbins so that my bobbin thread matched my top thread. And when you turn this over, it looks just as beautiful, if not more than the front even though it's just white fabric. So it's showcasing all of those beautiful colors. So again, this is called our Sunshine and Daydreams Thread Palette for Quilting. You can find it at sulky.com. I also link to it in the description of today's post. If you're only seeing a little bit of the description today, you will want to hit that little see more button and you will find the links for everything I will be talking about. All of the products, all of the full tutorial for this table topper so you don't have to write anything down. You can just head on over to the Sulky blog um, directly through that post or through that link that I posted and find all the dimensions and everything that I did to design this table topper. Um, also, this happens to be our giveaway today. So with every So What, we uh, have a cute little giveaway, kind of like a door prize for all of you watching. So if you are commenting, liking, sharing, engaging with the post today, giving me those emojis, you are automatically eligible to win 
and it is this Sunshine and Daydreams thread palette for quilting. So one of you lucky folks who are watching today will win this great thread pack. All right, so hi, hi everyone. I'm seeing you all come in with your heart emojis. Fantastic. And yes, I know it is rainy in a lot of the country, which is actually so great. I mean, what's better than some rain showers when we are getting hit with so much heat and sun? So um, I know that sometimes the rain can be overwhelming, especially when it lasts for a long time. And hopefully, you know, there's not a ton of flooding and everything where you all are from. Um, but we just so need the rain, especially out here in Colorado. We've had um, a really rainy past couple of weeks. So um, all the more reason to sew up some sunshine and add it to your table decor. You can use this table topper for an outdoor barbecue or you can simply put it on an indoor table. And I love that it, it has this circular shape. It makes it very easy to bind. There's no mitered corners needed. Um, and it's a really easy sew so you can spend more time on your quilting um, and your quilting design that you would like to use. Okay. We need the sun this year. All right, so we're gonna bring we're going to bring the sun. <laughs> um, I also want to mention we have a great sale going on right now. We have 30 to 40% off select webinar kits. If you have never attended a Sulky webinar in the past, they are all virtual. They are all available on our education platform at sewingonline.sulky.com. You can browse our legacy webinars, which go along with all of the kits that you see um, on this sale page. And I was looking at it this morning. There are some fantastic deals. Like, honestly, I cannot believe the prices of some of these webinar kits. You can get full quilt kits for 40% off. You can get some of our smaller uh, webinar kits, which I shouldn't say smaller, but just really great sews for summer. They come together really quickly when you purchase a kit that includes everything that you need right there in a great sealed bag with all of your thread, sometimes needles, sometimes fabrics, all kinds of great things. So check out that sale at sulky.com. Everything is already marked down, so you don't need a coupon code or anything. You can simply just get going and get sewing. Okay. So let's see where I want to begin here. Like I mentioned, this is an applique project, so you will need some fusible web. Now, Sulky is coming out with a brand new Sulky fusible web. It's so exciting. So it is Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web. Now, it's not available at sulky.com yet. You better believe when it is, I'll be telling you all about it. If you joined us for our Hexies in the Hoop webcast last month with Xandra Shaw, that kit came with a sample of the new Sulky Fusible Web. So let me know with a thumbs up if you grabbed that kit and you had a chance to use the new Sulky Fusible Web. I really love it. It's a nice light weight. It doesn't gum up your needle when you're sewing. It doesn't shift from the paper. It's a really, really great product because you should expect nothing less from Sulky. Um, however, in its absence, since we are not offering it quite yet, it's still being packaged up and all of that and getting ready for all of you, um, we have another great fusible web at our website called Soft Fuse. Soft Fuse is a paperbacked fusible web and it has some of the same qualities as the Sulky Fusible Web. So that's what I'm recommending for now for this project while we're waiting to launch the Sulky product. So it's another great Fusible Web as well. I think you'll really like working with it. Um, again, it's also very lightweight. I like a lightweight Fusible Web when I'm doing a um, quilty project because I don't want the um, fabric, the hand of the fabric to change after I've added all of this adhesive. 
Um, I don't want it to become kind of bulletproof or, um, you know, change the hand of it at all. So these lighter weight fusible webs are really great for quilting cottons and quilty projects. All right. So all that being said, our first step is to kind of mark our circle perimeter onto the background fabric. Now, I had a little trick for this. Many of you probably know this trick, but what I do is I measure a length of string. You can use twine, um, heavier weight thread, and you can tie it to a removable fabric marker. Once you have measured how long um, or what the diameter of your circle is going to be. So cut the length of your string and then mark your circle by holding the other end of your string on the fabric center. So you're kind of making a large, um, what are those called, compass, <laughs> using a string and a removable fabric marker. This is just to kind of mark your outer circle so that when you're placing your appliques, you have your border in mind. Um, and in this photo, I kind of folded my fabric but you will start with a larger um, yardage and draw your circle. Um, I kind of folded it just for ease on my table for marking and then unfolded it once I was working with everything and doing the quilting. And again, all these dimensions, everything that I used for my table topper are on the blog post. So you can go on to that link and get all the instructions that you need. Okay, also, I did use a heat removable marking pen. Um, keep in mind whatever marking pen you use, some of them become permanent once you iron them. And there's a lot of ironing and fusing and everything when you're using or when you're doing applique. So you want to choose a marker that's not going to become permanent with heat. Um, this one, like I said, uh, re is removed with heat. So along those same lines, if you want to keep um, your marking lines throughout the process, be sure not to hit them with the tip of your iron because then you'll have to remark them. So just some things to think about when you're choosing the uh, removable fabric marker for your particular project. All right, once you have marked your circle border onto your background fabric, it's time for the marking and fusing for your sun appliques. So we've got our center sun and I found a really cool cotton batik for this that was absolutely perfect. So check out the batiks. This is also a really great fat quarter project. Um, I, I found a fat quarter of this print that they did not have on the bolt. So I just grabbed up that fat quarter to use for the center sun. Um, the outer sun rays, I found a really cool striped fabric with all of those great sunset colors. Um, so have fun choosing your fabrics. I think I purchased a half a yard for this for the sun rays, I'm calling them. Um, but I didn't need all of it. So the exact yardage that you will need is in the blog post. Um, if you want to create the exact dimensions and the size of the table runner that I created. It does look a little bit small only because it's far back here on my wall, but you could see once I go back here, it's much larger than it appears um, when I am closer to the camera. So you could see it is pretty good size. Um, it fits the center of a table quite nicely. If you have a circular dining table, really cool to create a circular table topper. Okay, so once you have all of your fabrics chosen, of course, you can fuse your fusible web to the back of those fabrics. And I sort of marked my center sun as well as my sun rays before I did the fusing. So that's already on there, I just used a pencil, but you could fuse and then mark afterwards as well, depending on just how you would like to do it. So. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for the fusing. I wanted to also mention that these little mini irons are great for smaller applique projects where you want to kind of have 
a, a pressing station maybe next to your sewing machine so that you can kind of fuse, cut, sew, fuse, cut, sew. Um, but I love my mini iron. In the photos, I wasn't using it um, because I love my larger Rowenta steam iron as well. But for these projects, you want to make sure that your iron is not too hot. If it's too hot, you will have sort of a gummy mess of your fusible web and it could create kind of a bumpy texture on your applique. And it also could actually um, lose its fusibility. So if you have too hot of an iron, it kind of wants to melt away. That's where you get a little bit of the oozing along the side of the paper of your fusible web and where you could have some problems with um, transferring that adhesive to your iron sole plate. And we definitely don't want that, but if it does happen, you can get a really great iron cleaner and clean that up. But to avoid that, you could also use a nonstick pressing sheet. I linked to one in the description of today's post. Um, if you're doing applique projects, you might just find it handy to put an, a nonstick pressing sheet. Also, if your iron is a little bit too hot and you have that pressing sheet over the top of your appliques when you're applying them, that will kind of diffuse a little bit of that heat as well. But just be mindful, you want a low to medium temp iron when you're using fusible webs. All right, so then it's time to cut them out and leave the paper backing intact. Um, I don't like to remove the paper backing until right before I'm going to fuse, um, just in case I forget that I've removed it and I go to press it or something and then all of a sudden, you know, I've got a permanent problem. So I leave it intact until I get all the applique pieces in place and then I gently remove each one and do my final fusing to the background fabric. All right, so now we have to position all of those rays um, underneath that edge of the sun fabric. Keep in mind, if you're using a darker fabric for the rays than your center sun, you really only want that uh, edge of your rays to be just along the outer edge of your sun. If you place them too far underneath that lighter color, you're going to have show through of the fabric underneath. So keep that in mind before you do your fusing because once it's fused, there's no going back. So here is how I kind of placed my rays so that I knew they were equidistant, which came in handy when I was doing the quilting because I actually quilted or I applique these, which was my first layer of quilting, in one continuous line going around the sun, which gave this really cool texture to the center part of the applique. It's a little bit hard to see, but I'll show you some close-up photos um, momentarily. So get a large ruler, place your sun rays equidistant around the sun. First, what you can do is mark your center cross mark along that center sun piece and position your first four rays. Then you can mark again and position the next four rays and so on until you have them all positioned. Then just for extra good measure, I used my ruler to line up those uh, lines along each ray, making sure that when I did my first applique quilting line that they all lined up perfectly. And yes, it gets a little tedious, but it is worth it. So now I have everything positioned. You can see the shadowing shows you I still have that paper backing intact on my appliques. So then I have to be very careful, remove the paper backing, position everything, double check it with my ruler, and then I can do my final fuse. So here I am fusing with the iron. And you know, circles can be a little bit tricky. Um, you may have to do some trimming and just kind of make sure it is where you want it to be. Now, I did raw edge applique on this. You could do a blanket stitch, you could do a satin stitch. 
It is entirely up to you. But like I said, my first applique stitch was actually my first quilting stitch. I fused everything and then I made my quilt sandwich and then I started quilting the um, first applique stitch of my son, like I said, in one continuous quilting line. If you are more comfortable uh, sewing your appliques first and then following through with your quilting, by all means, do what is more comfortable to you. Okay, so now my sun is all fused. And like I said, I'm creating the quilt sandwich. So I'm using my trusty Sulky KK2000, which is our temporary spray adhesive. It is honestly the best quilt basting spray in the universe, in my opinion. <laughs> I happen to love it. Um, so you're going to layer your backing fabric wrong side up, spray it with a little KK, put your batting rectangle over that, smooth it so it's nice and flat. Then you will spray the back of your applique um, top fabric and place it over the batting. Now, in the past, I have sprayed the batting and placed my top fabric over that, you know, right side facing up. Well, I got a tip from Patty, our great customer service representative. She is fantastic, thumbs up for Patty. Patty said, if you spray your KK directly onto the batting, the batting could absorb a little bit too much of the spray. So greater success is had when you are, spray the fabric instead and place it over the batting. Now. You can definitely spray your batting if you prefer that and you have success with that. I am just saying I am now a convert of that technique <laughs> and I always spray my fabric before placing it onto the batting. So create your lovely quilt sandwich. Now for extra security, I used a few of these wonder pins. Have you guys heard of wonder pins? It is a product by Clover. We now carry them at sulky.com because we have been using them and realize that they are really game changers. Now, if you're used to pin basting a quilt or even using those kind of bent quilt safety pins, um, you will understand how tired your hands get after a while of pin basting your quilt. And you might be asking, so I have spray basted this, why do I need to add additional pins? Well, here's the thing. The spray basting is fantastic, but if this is going to take you more than, let's say one sewing session to finish the quilting, that temporary spray adhesive could start to dissipate. It, it's air soluble. And it does last around 36 hours or so between I like to say 24 to 48 hours because it really depends on your coverage um, and the humidity in the air and probably some other factors. So anywhere between 24 and 48 hours and then you would need to reapply your spray. Well, if you already have some of your quilting done, you don't want anything to shift if it's going to take you a couple of days. So I like to use these wonder pins for just some extra security over time so that I can get my quilting done. And I featured, uh, I did a lot of quilting lines, featured a lot, a lot of thread because I wanted to sort of go from orange to yellow to white um, with my quilting lines. So at any rate, these wonder pins, basically you stick the pin in and you just press it down with one sort of click of the finger and the pin is secured. And it's so much easier to use than finagling with a safety pin. And it's completely protected by this cute pink plastic. They come in pink and yellow in the pack. So you can also kind of um, color code your quilt if you need to. Uh, but at any rate, they're totally protected by this plastic so that you don't run into them like a regular pin um, while you're doing your quilting. and they're just a great, great product. So I highly recommend a few wonder pins. Um, this is what the 
packaging looks like when you find it at sulky.com, but there's 20 of them in the box, which is plenty for this size project. If you're doing a larger quilt, you might want a couple of boxes of these. They're really, really great if you have arthritis or if you have, um, I sometimes get, um, it, it probably is the beginning of arthritis. I'm not quite sure, but, um, you know, my thumbs aren't what they used to be. Let's just say, um, from all this pinning and sewing and stuff that I do all of the time. So these are just really a lifesaver. So I wanted to share that all with you. And here you can see all of my wonder pins. I just added them in the, uh, white areas beyond the applique. I didn't put the pins through the applique pieces. Those are all fused and good to go. Okay. Sorry, I lost the next photo. There it is. Okay, so now my first layer of quilting begins, which is also my applique stitching. So I'm stitching through all layers here. Um, I am matching my bobbin thread color to my top every time. So I chose one thread to start with for my continuous line of sewing. And I positioned my uh, stitching line about an eighth of an inch inside of my outer applique lines. If you happen to have a laser light on your sewing machine, like I am lucky enough to have, that makes it so nice and easy to follow that line while you are going across your sun rays. So I started in the center. You can also use your removable fabric marker and draw the lines across your entire sun. So I went from one sun ray all the way across the center of the sun down to the um, adjacent, not adjacent, the opposite sun ray, and then across and continuing in sort of a star formation or a sun formation until I had all of those sun rays applique. That was my first thread color and my first line of stitching. There you can see some of my intersecting lines as I continued along and using that laser uh, light level or level, the laser light to really guide me as I was sewing. So after you applique the sun rays, you need to make sure you have that center circle sewn down as well. So I chose another thread color for that. I just went with the um, pretty bright yellow that is in the palette. Let me go back and show you all of those. These are all of your beautiful choices. So again, you've got peaches, oranges, yellows, there's a light, light yellow, there's gold. So no matter what fabrics you find, if you go with some beautiful batiks, if you mix a batik with a striped fabric like I did, um, you will have all the thread colors you need for any type of sun, sunrise, sunset that you want to create for your table topper. So again, for those of you just joining, this is our sunshine and daydreams thread palette for quilting. And it's a really great price. You get all 12 of these and there's just beautiful, beautiful colors. So I went one of, with one of those um, really light shades to coordinate with um, that batik in the center. So you'll want to do your center sun. And then what I did was, oh, this is me adding some more uh, quilting lines down the center. So this is my first line that goes down the center in between each one of those rays. So it's going from edge to edge in between each one of the rays. And you can see I have a little bit of a fabric marker there. Um, I marked the quadrants first, you know, and then and so on. And this is the heat removable fabric marker that I used for this. Okay, so then once I had all of the lines in between each ray, then I went 
um, on an angle side to side. And this is where I chose a different thread color for each subsequent line of quilting that I added beyond the sun applique. So I went from darkest to lightest using the thread palette as my guide. I just took all 12 of those colors, lined them up from those dark golds down to the lightest, lightest yellow, and that's what I used to quilt the remainder of that white fabric that surrounds the sun. Oh, Denise is asking, no walking foot? Um, I didn't use a walking foot because I have an integrated dual feed foot on my machine. It's this little bar that pops down and around and kind of hugs the back of the presser foot. And it turns that presser foot into a walking foot, essentially. Um, and that's why it's called a dual feed foot because it's feeding the fabric from the top at the same rate as the feed dogs on the bottom of the fabric. So essentially, yes, I did use a walking foot, but with my particular machine model, which is the Designer Epic 2 from Husqvarna Viking, there isn't an additional walking foot. It's just this integrated dual feed foot that comes down and uh, snaps onto the back of the foot. So um, good. Good point though, if you have a walking foot, put that on. If you have an integrated dual feed foot like I do, make sure that's engaged. Um, Bernina's have a, a different type of integrated foot as well. I forget what it's called right now. Um, oh, Bonnie says she has that on her Bernina 790. Um, it is very handy, um, but if you don't have that, I suggest testing, um, make a little tiny quilt sandwich using your leftover fabrics or additional fabrics or scrap fabrics and use your KK. Make sure you're doing the same things you're doing for your um, beauty project and do a test. Now, if your presser foot is kind of smushing those fabrics while you're sewing, so you're seeing kind of rippling happening while you're sewing, that means the presser foot pressure is too great and you need to loosen that up a bit, meaning sort of raise your presser foot ever so slightly to accommodate the bulk of fabric underneath it. So check your machine manual. There should be a setting where you can adjust the pressure presser foot pressure um, to alleviate those problems. Um, and also, that spray basting is really gonna help as well, help feed your fabric through um, at the same rate, your backing, your batting, and your top fabric. All right, so quilting, 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 changing out your thread colors. Now, make sure to also change out your bobbin because like I mentioned, the back of this looks so cool. You're almost making a reversible table topper. Depending on your mood, you could show off your beautiful batik or your cotton fabrics on the top. And then in a couple of weeks, you could flip it over and have this beautiful thread work on the other side, make it a nice centerpiece, put a bowl of flowers in the center, um, and it looks amazing as well. All right, so once all of that quilting is complete, Remove those trusty wonder pins and you want to trim it up around that circle. So now is the time to double check that you have um, a, an actual circle, that you don't have any weird spots. Um, so double check, fold it in half, trim it up, fold it in half again. Make sure that you have a nice round circle for when you are binding your creation. All right, Dawn is asking, do I have a picture of the back? I think I do, but if I don't have it on here, I'll just take this down and I'll show it to you and hopefully you can see it uh, with my lighting that I have. I should mention, you know, you can free motion quilt this. You can quilt this using an embroidery design for the center and then kind of outline quilt beyond the embroidery design. You could add a little saying 
or maybe the letter of your last name on here. Um, it would make a really pretty sort of wreath for your front door if you made it a little bit smaller. So there are a lot of things you can do here. If you are intimidated by quilting, maybe you always send off your quilts to a long armor. Um, you know, I, I send larger quilts to a long armor simply because I do not have the space to do them. Um, and sometimes that gets done quicker than I can do it myself. <laughs> I always, always bring along the thread that I want my long armor to use to make sure it's great quality, to make sure I get the colors that I want. Um, I don't leave those decisions up to my long armor and she loves using the thread too. So, um, and you might even get a couple of bucks off um, if you know, you're sending it to a service like that if you are supplying your own thread. So keep those things in mind. But this is a small enough quilt or quilty project, I like to call it. Um, since, you know, I really, I could go into, you know, what makes a quilt, etc. This is essentially a quilt because we are sewing through all of these layers. Um, a quilt can really be anything that is layered. It doesn't even have to be fabric. Um, but at any rate, I'm calling it a quilty project rather than a quilt. <laughs> Lots of schools of thought on that. Semantics, right? Um, anyway, if you're new to quilting or it's intimidating to you, this is a great first project to try your hand at it because we're just using straight lines here. Um, and if you use your removable fabric marker and plot all of those lines before you sew them, uh, you know what? You'll have great success. Um, I should also mention it's a great idea if you're using these heat removable marking pens. I have pen styles. I also have highlighter styles to grab up a few different colors, especially if you're using different colors of thread, because that gives you a visual clue that, okay, I need to switch out my bobbin and my top thread because now I can see that I'm on a different colored line. So it gives you that visual clue so that you don't accidentally get in the quilting groove and start using the same color and oh my gosh, there went your, your quilting plan. Um, so a great idea to um, grab up a few different colors of pens if you are going to use those as marking tools um, to denote your quilting lines. Okay, so after we trim up our uh, circle, there we go. She's nice and trimmed and ready for the binding. Okay, before I get to binding this, which I made my own binding for this, you could certainly grab up um, some pre-made binding if you want to go that route, but I found another uh, yellow striped fabric that really went with the stripes that I used on the rays. Um, I should also mention that I did need to get a little bit extra yardage because I wanted my rays all with the lines going up and down. Um, so I couldn't uh, be, cons I couldn't, what's the right word? I couldn't maximize the yardage um, by cutting some of them horizontally, some of them vertically. So just keep in mind, if you have a little bit of a directional print when you're cutting those out, you might need a little more fabric than what I suggested in the pattern, which is on the blog. So keep that in mind. I didn't want to forget to say that, but I found a great striped fabric to create my own binding. And I love using a striped fabric for binding because when you cut it on the bias, um, you have sort of a, you know, diagonal look to your stripes and it just gives it a whole different look. So when you are, uh, going through and finding fabric for your binding, keep those things in mind. You might be able to find a really fun sunshine print, or you could use some of that same batik fabric um, that you used for the center sun, and that would be really pretty as well. Okay. Here's a little bit closer up of that quilting, so you can see, um, you know, what I, what I did and how you can see those quilting lines in the center sun. I thought that was a really cool detail as opposed to just doing, you know, a traditional satin stitch to secure the appliques. I thought this was just a really neat, um, 
you know, different way of thinking about it. And you could see in the rays, I did not add additional quilting there. You certainly could add some more lines. Um, you could do lines all radiating, radiating out from the center. Um, and that would be so, so neat. So lots of options for planning out those lines. Use your ruler, use a heat removable marking pen, plot it all out, see what it looks like. And then if you don't like it or you wanna do something different, simply remove those marks and start again. So you can really have fun with it. If you don't like using those heat removable marking pens, um, you can use the marking pen of your choice, but again, make sure that it's not permanent from the heat of your iron um, or other factors. So you wanna really test those marking pens to make sure they will be removed on your final piece of art. Um, you can also cut strips of sulky, sticky Fabrisolvi, and you can use those to plot your lines, and you can actually sew over them, um, and they're water-soluble. So it's basically like a water-soluble tape that you're creating your own self. Just cut little strips of that stabilizer and it also helps stabilize your piece while you are sewing it. And then when you're all done and the piece is bound and everything is finished, throw it in the washing machine and remove all of that sticky fabric solvi. So that's another great quilting tip for when you're quilting straight lines, um, outline or echo quilting, things like that. Those strips of sticky fabric solvi are a game changer. All right, before we get to the binding, I am going to see if we have some questions coming in. And thank you, Patrick, appreciate it. I had, you know, I, I tried a couple of different things and then I thought I could do one continuous line of sewing for that first applique stitching. And then that kind of um, helped me plan the rest of the quilting. Okay, let me just make sure we don't have some questions coming in. If you do have questions, let me know in the comments and we will get to them. Sandra says, I'm surprised you didn't use any Poly Sparkle. I mean, why didn't I think of that? The Poly Sparkle would be great for the sun. Poly Sparkle is our uh, polyester thread with flecks of metallic running through it. It's also a 30 weight thread. So it's heavier than this 50 weight thread that I used. Um, so that's a great option. Um, but I really liked grabbing up the 12 pack of already curated thread colors and incorporating all of those into the quilt. But another cool thing you could do is you might have a fun decorative stitch that you could use to secure your binding. Um, maybe it even looks like a little tiny sun and you could use the poly sparkle for that and have just that hint of metallic peeking out along that binding edge. That would be really cute. All right, could you use variegated thread instead of changing the colors for quilting? You certainly could. And you know, the Sulky 30 weight blendables, those are fantastic. And you could use a blendable thread for the entire thing and it would look beautiful. Um, I just really loved the idea of going from dark to light, um, you know, just really emphasizing the sun or the sunset um, idea behind this table topper. So that was why I went with it. Okay. What is a good marking pen for the quilting? So I used the friction highlighter pens and like I said, they, they are removed with heat, and I used a couple of different colors for each quilting line, depending on where and when I was quilting and or appliquing the sun in place, um, just to give me a visual clue for switching out my thread color. The sun would make a great center for a larger project too, exactly. Um, and I go over all of the dimensions, the size of the circles and everything that I use to create this, but you can certainly take this idea and just use it to springboard, um, you know, other project ideas. That's the whole, that's the whole thing is take this, make it your own 
enlarge it for a larger quilt. It would be really pretty to have this beautiful sun as the center focal point of a larger quilt on top of a bed. That would be so amazing. Um, and it doesn't have to, you know, quilting doesn't have to be a bunch of piecing, right? Like you could, if you wanted to create a large sun as a larger quilt for a bed, you could use maybe even a bed sheet as your background fabric, find the center of it, create a large scale sun applique, use your fusible web and do this quilting design. You don't have to do a bunch, a bunch of piecing to make a beautiful quilt. Sometimes the quilting itself and all the beautiful thread work um, is what is going to make it really stunning. Cheryl says, where can I find the pattern? I linked to it in the description of today's post. It's a blog post, so you really need to follow the directions and create your sun appliques based on my dimensions that I give you. Um, but again, you could make this smaller and make it into your door wreath. So, all right. Oh, oh yes, picture of the back. Okay, let's see if we can get to that. Okay. And yes, this project will brighten up dreary winter days. I love it. Okay, so let's get to the binding. So like I mentioned, I created my own binding for this and I used this yellow and gold striped fabric. So you do want to cut your binding um, on the bias. So at a 45 degree angle from the either selvage edge, um, you can kind of fold your fabric to find the 45 degree angle, or you can use your marked ruler to find your 45 degree angle, fold it, press it, and then cut your strips along that pressed line, and you will have your binding strips. Now, I like to cut my binding at two and a quarter inch wide, um, and then I just cut a bunch of strips and then I piece them together along the short ends. When you're piecing them together, you need to make sure you are accounting for your seam allowance. You do not want to piece them together so that the edges match perfectly because then your long edges are going to be off by that seam allowance amount. So what you wanna do is offset your corners. I explained this in last week's So What and I thought I had my sample handy, but I think I sewed it onto the tabletop work. So at any rate, you want to offset your corners so that you have these little dog ears poking out. And I will show you that in just a moment. Then sew them together. So when you press open your seam or press it to one side, whatever you like to do, you will see these little dog ears poking out and your long edges match perfectly. Also, you want to sew your strips together so that they are crossing like this not matching up perfectly. Because you are doing bias binding and you are sewing them together at an angle, you need to sew them, your ends together this way. Um, so it looks like a 90 degree angle when you're sewing it. That way when you open it up, it's straight going across. I'm sure many of you already know this because you make your own binding anyways, but for any beginners out there, we have some great binding tutorials at sulky.com that you can follow and get all the how-tos for how to create your own custom binding. I also included it, um, a little sort of, uh, not recap, but an overview of how to do it within this pattern as well. So once you have your long binding strips sewn, you'll want to fold the edge that you're going to start with over about a quarter inch to the wrong side and press it. This is gonna be the beginning part of your binding. But when we start sewing into the table runner, we're going to start sewing it about three inches away from that fold. We don't wanna sew the fold down yet because we need to join our binding strips once we get all the way around the circle. Okay, so after you fold that end to the wrong side to make it nice and pretty and hide those raw edges, you will fold your binding strip in half lengthwise with wrong sides together 
and give it a good press. And here is where you can see my little dog ear points from my joined binding seam poking out along the edge there of my binding. Now you can trim those away after you press it or you can trim those away after you kind of clip it around your table topper, whatever you prefer for your process. So now you will want to uh, clip this to the perimeter of your table topper. I always start from the right side of the work and then I fold my binding around to the wrong side after I've done my first round of sewing. Um, other people like to sew it to the back side, fold it around to the front, and then maybe do a decorative stitch or a straight stitch by machine. But I always hand sew my binding. So I sew it to the top first, then fold it around to the back, and then do my hand sewing. So first, I clip it, and I'm using the Great Clover Wonder Clips. If you have not discovered these yet, we have them at sulky.com. We have smaller Wonder Clips and then sort of a little bit larger. Um, I used both in this because I just clip every few inches or so. So this is the smaller tipped ones and then the larger tipped ones. I have uses for both of these, so I have both sizes. Um, and the smaller ones come in a nifty little carrying case or storage case, so that's real nice. Um, they also have different colors, so if you are doing something where you need a visual clue for something, let's say it's an opening for turning, you can use one color wonder clip around your project and then where you have your opening, you can clip it with a different color giving you that visual clue that, oh wait, I need to stop and something else needs to happen here. I will take those visual clues wherever I can get them because I am always sewing my opening shut and then I have to seam rip it, you know, all those good things. <laughs> all right, so clip your binding in place and actually at this time you can join your binding as well. Oh, here are the mini wonder clips. That's what it looks like in the packaging. Again, these are available at sulky.com. So joining the binding ends, ends. So once you get to that beginning where you have that cute little folded edge, I overlap my binding end inside of the binding beginning. Some people do not like doing this. They would rather sort of sew that together with wrong sides facing. And if you do that, you won't need to fold your end over. The reason I have folded that is so I have a nice finished edge, but if you are sewing that portion, um, you can undo the fold and then you can sew along that line um, and then trim off the rest of your binding. But I like to overlap my binding beginning around the binding end. So at this point, I would remove the clips from the beginning place the end of the binding inside that fold, make sure everything is nice and flat, continue my clips, and then cut off my binding end just a little bit past that binding beginning mark. So a lot of people ask, how do you join the ends? And I think this is the easiest way, especially for beginners. Um, some people don't like having that little bit extra bulk that you get by, um, overlapping your binding pieces, it really doesn't bother me, quite honestly. I really, I press it so it's nice and flat. Um, and again, I also like to hand sew my binding. So that little bit extra bulk right there doesn't bother me. Um, I find it's pretty inconspicuous. Uh, once the uh, quilt or quilty project is complete, uh, so that's really up to you if you prefer a different way or method of binding by all means, do what you prefer, what you like to do. So there you can see my end is placed inside the beginning. I have a little bit of dog ear that I need to clean up there and just trim away. But once I have that in and trimmed, I continue my pinning. And now I can do one continuous line of sewing to attach the binding edge to my quilty project. So there I am just trimming away that little dog ear. 
and then it is time for sewing. So the reason that you need to cut your binding on the bias for this project is because it's in a circle. So when you cut fabric on the bias, it gives you a tiny amount of stretch. And that tiny amount of stretch is what's going to allow us to bind this curved edge without puckering um, and stretching, and or not stretching, without puckering, and it gives you a really beautiful finished edge. If you were to cut this bias binding along a straight grain, um, you might struggle a little bit getting it around that curve when you fold it to the wrong side to when, you know, when you're binding that edge. So you really want to be aware that you need to cut your strips at that 45 degree angle. All right, so then I fold my binding around to the back and I use my wonder clips again all the way around the perimeter of the piece and then I do some hand sewing and I just do an invisible stitch. You could do a slip stitch, a ladder stitch, um, and just secure your binding that way. And I just chose one of the thread colors that matched my binding uh, color. So everything coordinates so nicely. And then we have the finished piece. So hanging behind me. And I guess I don't have a picture of the backing. So let me just remove it from the wall and I'll try to show you close up what the back looks like. All right. So here is our finished table runner. All of those colorful quilting lines. It's hard to see with my light blasting, but here is the back. Let me see if I can adjust my brightness so you can see it better. I'll make it real dark. So you can see all those quilting lines that I created and they are all in different colors. It's just really hard to see with the lighting that I have in the room here. Um, maybe I can get it closer. It's kind of hard to see all it's hard to see all the colors but it's very colorful <laughs> and it's just kind of cool this you know star pattern like I said this would look really neat on your table as well so you've, you're kind of creating a reversible piece that you can use one way you know outdoors and then one way inside or just change up your decor for the summer from July into August, um, and you'll have a totally different look on your hands. So it's kind of cool, kind of neat. I hope that um, I hope that you all, you know, make this your own. Like I said, you could do a set of placemats a little bit smaller than this size, um, and have really pretty circular placemats. I love a circular placemat with your circular plate and it just looks so pretty. So it's a great idea um, for gift giving as well. You can make smaller, tinier little mug rugs or coasters with a little sun on them and really experiment with the quilting lines on a coaster project. Um, that would be a great way to introduce somebody into quilting if you're teaching um, a youngin uh, the lovely art of quilting make this into a little mug rug and have them practice these fun quilting lines on the machine. Mark them, teach them about, um, you know, using the markings on your throat plate and or the laser light if you happen to have one of those. And they'll really get the hang of straight stitching and understanding, um, you know, edge stitching versus um, applique stitching, experimenting with different decorative stitches on the machine, so there are a lot of um, options, you know, choose a, um, you could do a blanket stitch, but I think for a sun, you want to go a little bit more modern um, than a traditional blanket stitch applique. You could choose a star stitch um, or something like that for your binding or maybe just for the center sun um, applique stitching. So Applique can be really fun ways to use those decorative stitches that we don't normally um, get to play around with. I mean, my machine, I don't even know how many decorative stitches it has, but 
so many that I've never even used. So um, another great idea is to make yourself a little stitch sampler. Um, you know, I mentioned before test stitching to determine the pressure of your presser foot, um, making sure that it's not smushing your quilt down while you're sewing. Um, so quilt sampler, just take half of a fat quarter or use a whole fat quarter and fold it in half, put a piece of uh, batting in between, use your KK to secure everything and just do rows of stitches. Go through your decorative stitch menu all on the same piece of fabric. You can write notes uh, um, using a Sharpie or permanent marker and say what number stitch that is or what the name of it is or if you did anything to the length or width of the stitch, write notes and then you have a little stitch sampler. You can even hang it in your sewing room and it's really easy to identify what stitch do I want to use and when. So that's a really great reference tool and especially helps you learn about your machine and kind of audition how the needle moves and how the fabric moves while these decorative stitches are being created. Um, some of them do wacky things and move back and forth and all, you know, all kinds of stuff. So it's a great way to, you know, watch what happens, record things. You know, if you have a notebook of embroidery stitches, you can create this little quilt sampler and have that in your notebook as well. So these are all great, great tools to streamline your sewing for future projects. So while you're in the mode, you know, you can maybe do an applique journal, put that stitch sampler in there, write your notes in there, and then it just makes it easier and easier the more projects that you do to have that. Okay. So a couple of other things that I wanted to share with you all because we are just in the throes of summer and you know, sewing over the summer months, it gets to be a little difficult to work in um, our creative pursuits because, you know, especially now that it's a little bit easier to travel this year and um, get out there on the road and things like that, um, it, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to schedule our sewing time. And if you don't have air conditioning in your sewing room, um, that can make it even more difficult. You don't want to spend all those hours, um, you know, in your swampy sewing room. So um, we have created a couple of summer sewing sessions on our education site at sewingonline.sulky.com. Our first one uh, launched on Memorial Day, and it was the Dini pouch that we did with Sally Tomato. And you can still participate in the Dini pouch because the entire sewing session is available on demand at any time. So it's not a live class. You don't have to show up at a particular time. You will get all of the information just as everyone else does. And with purchase of your sewing session, you get an exclusive pattern. So this is the Dini pouch. It comes in two sizes. This is the large project pouch. And we also have a wallet size and it has this great zipper and it opens completely flat. And you can store a rotary cutter, your sewing tools, all kinds of things inside. And you can organize the project that you're working on um, if you want to do that. You can also use this just as like a clutch purse. It's a great size for toting things that you need and it has this awesome little tassel. I love the details. Little machine embroidery. You get two machine embroidery designs with purchase of the session as well. So it's a really fabulous deal. We still have kits available for this too. And once you sign up for the session, you get a coupon to save big money on your kit purchase. So that's the Dini pouch. You can sign up for that, but we are also launching a brand new summer sewing session in a couple of weeks. It is the DIY lounge wrap. So this is the first time we're talking about this and it features Meg Healy, who is a wonderful sewing celebrity, 
Um, I've just, I've worked with her a bunch in my life. She's a great person. She's a wonderful creative sewer and she really specializes in garment sewing. So if garment sewing intimidates you or you haven't done it in a long while, you know, there have been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of talk about using commercial patterns and sort of how difficult it is to find the right size that works for you. You know, a lot of these are based on European sizing. And so it can be really challenge, challenging to fit a garment to your body. Um, this DIY lounge wrap is a great pattern for any body type. There is no fitting required. You simply take a couple of measurements, you draft your own pattern, and then you can use it to create tons of different lounge wraps. French terry, knit, even a woven fabric works with this pattern. So if you register today, um, in the coming weeks, this one starts on August 2nd. On August 2nd, all of the content will uh, be activated and then you can interact with it however you choose. Watch the videos when it's convenient for you. Schedule your sewing time around your vacations, your travel, your activities. Come back and forth to it as you desire. Create lots of these lounge wraps Meg is going to give you ideas for embellishing, ideas for options to make them all look different. Um, these are great for lounging, but you can even wear them out on the town, depending on the fabric that you choose. So I think you will all really, really enjoy this sewing session. And again, if you have never done garment sewing, or if you kind of gave up on it, I think this is going to really pique your interest. Um, it's just great, great content. And you'll get this lounge wrap pattern for free with purchase of the session, as well as a brand new embroidery design um, created specifically for this project. So I think you'll really love it. I am telling you all about it a little bit early because I want you to be able to get your kit and get everything together. Um, also, when you purchase the session, you will get a coupon code to purchase fabric from SoSo -So English. SoSo -So English is a great fabric company. They have the most luxurious knit fabrics. They also carry wovens and you will get a 20% off coupon code so that you can buy any fabric you like to create your lounge wrap. Um, so Super exciting things going on. You can go to the link that I posted in the description of today's post and check it out and learn more about it. Um, and I think you'll really love it. All right. Lounge wrap. Yay. <laughs> and yes, it's loose fitting. There are also ways to customize it to kind of cinch it a little bit more to your body if you would like to do that. Um, all right. Norma has signed up for it. Maybe that was the Dini pouch. I can't remember. Okay. Another thing I want you all to be aware of because it is happening next Tuesday. This is our live video cast countdown to Christmas. Um, I will be showing you all the sewing steps to create this awesome Christmas countdown calendar. And I know, are you thinking Christmas? What the heck? But yes, it's July now. So Christmas in July and we are halfway to Christmas. So if we're going to create some beautiful things to dress up our decor, add to our decor for the holidays, now is the time to get started. So I will be going over all of the quilting, all of the embroidery. You can do this, uh, this design by hand or by machine. Um, it's a cross stitch design that we digitize for machine embroidery. The kit is available at a great, great price right now up until the day of the video cast. So this is happening next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. I will be your host and instructor and I'll take you through all of the piecing, quilting, embroidery, all of that good stuff. Um, so please join me, register today, grab up your kit, um, while supplies last and oh my gosh, 
Sissy has said only 171 days till Christmas. So the countdown is on, everyone. <laughs> All right, I'll be telling you a little bit more about this next Tuesday on our next So What, but I also want you to be prepared and mark your calendars for 2 p.m. Eastern time at sewingonline.sulky.com. Please join me for this fantastic video cast. Phew, all right, so we covered a lot today. Applique, quilting, binding, all kinds of fun things, and I hope that you are all inspired to go out and create something beautiful today. And uh, join me next week for another So What, as well as for our Countdown to Christmas video cast um, happening after the So What. So lots of things happening on Tuesday. I hope you all have a fantastic day. I always appreciate you tuning in and learning all about all of the new sulky stuff and inspiring your creativity. So. Thanks again, and I will see you all next time.